Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in our Autodesk Structural Bridge Design 2024. This video is part of a multi-playlist series in which we are going to be talking about the analysis, design and basically even drawings of bridges. And in the main bridge series, we stopped at the box girder, which is going to be a curved bridge, both in vertical and horizontal, and we're going to cover that later. But for now, we are going to be talking about the softwares used to kind of design those bridges, and thus we're going to make a quick video series about a simplified bridge to start with to understand the software, and then we can dive into more complicated bridges. The bridge I want to cover in this video series is going to be a two-span pre-stressed beam deck. I will give you more details about this during this video. So with that being being said, I hope you enjoy, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright, let me give you an introduction to the simplified bridge we're going to start modeling in Autodesk Structural Bridge Design, and as a precursor to bigger, more complicated geometries, because you need to start small in the beginning, we have here a pre-stressed, pre-cast beam structure, those beams, one, Two, three, four, five, and six are pre-cast, pre-stressed beams, and there is a deck slab above the beam. The deck slab above the beam is 200 millimeters thick. The thickness of it is 200 millimeters. And of course, there is at the uh, support line. This is called the support line. This is where the beams are supported. Now, how are the beams supported? There are a lot of options, actually. You can, for example, support them using a hammerhead. But today I will just be covering the bridge. So you need to stiffen those beams, so we usually put a diaphragm here, even if it's a box girder. Even if you have a box girder as a structure, you still have to put a diaphragm at the support line. So it's stiffened by a diaphragm. Uh, the diaphragm is 600 millimeters wide, and at the end of the edge here, at the, at the, at the edge of the bridge, there is a little upstand, or we call it sometimes barrier. So yeah, that's basically the bridge for you. The bridge span is 21 meters for each support line. Uh, this is the diaphragm, as we said. There's 21 meters here, 21 meters here. And from the top view, it, there's a little skew angle. The bridge is not like this, where the approach slab and the bridge are perfectly aligned. No, a slight skew here. And we're going to try to explain how we can cover that. We're going to be using a weaker concrete for the deck. So for this, we're going to be using C3240. And before you continue, yes, we're going to be talking about the Euro code. I've had so many messages about my dear viewers saying that you seem to be more focused on the American codes. So let's focus on the Euro codes a little bit for this time. I will get back to the American codes, of course. The deck slab is C3240 and the concrete of the pre-stressed beams is gonna be C5060. The reason why we use stronger concrete for pre-stressed is because, well, it's pre-stressed and there are gonna be compression and compressive forces. Also, because the beams are more critical than the deck slab. For the reinforcement, I will be using grade B500 and for the pre-stressing tendons, you are used to seeing 1870, I think, or 50, I forgot exactly what the number that is. And for the sequence, how the construction is going to take place, the first step in the construction is to basically put the beams on the supports. That's stage number one, and make sure that they can carry their own weight. So stage one is basically the beams. I don't think you can see them, but let me just put here a beam. This is stage number one. The first thing that will happen here is the beams. Then we are going to cast 18 meters of concrete here and 18 meters of concrete here. So we're going to cast this slab and that slab. Those two slabs are cast as stage two, or I don't know what he calls, he calls here stage 1A. And then we're going to cast the centra six meters. The reason why we're going to cast the centra six meters is because of practical considerations. There are a ton of issues I need to discuss here. I don't want to make this become a pre-stressed application video, but to quickly say that since you are using pre-cast beams, those pre-cast beams come at a certain length. So you might have pre-cast beam number one until here, and pre-cast beam number two until here, and you want to cast this entire thing uh, to connect those two pre-cast beams as well as diaphragm. Well, the, the issue here or the intention here is to cast the six meter infill slab with the central diaphragm, which when it becomes hardened will make the beams continuous over the central support. And then of course, the final stage is to cast the upstand or basically those barriers, okay? So the reason why we cast part of the slab until here and part of the slab until here and then finalize this has to do with the beam and its continuous action. However, 
Notice that, and this might become relevant later, depending on the assumption, you might have in the beginning a simply supported beam here and a simply supported beam here before the continuity is happening. This will depend on how we progress in this quick video series. I will, I will cover this later uh, when the time comes. So let's keep this in mind for now. The entire bridge is going to be 12 meters wide and you have a footway of 1.5 meters here, footway of 1.5 meters here and 8 meter carriageway. 8 meter carriageway means two lanes, one like this, one like this. Now what is our requirement here? Uh, it's required to design adequate pre-stress strand layout. So we are going to design the pre-stressing strands, how they look, how they move in the beam. And we are going to have appropriate debonding locations, satisfy everything needed for uh, execution and design situations, ultimate limit states, serviceability limit states, and so on. And also we need to check the section stresses. Now for the loads, the following loads will be applied. First of all, dead load for concrete, 25 kilonewtons per meter. You can even write this down. This might be a good way. This might be a good point where you should take a pencil and pen and write down the main assumptions of the loads. So for the material, I said those are my assumptions. Let me just write those things. So for concrete, you're going to have the C3240 for the slab. The C, uh, I think 40, let me check, 50 or 40, 50, 60 for the beams. And then you're going to have B500 for steel reinforcement and 1600 for pre-stress. Also, we are going to have a gamma of concrete of 25 density. We're going to have a surfacing load of 2 kilopascals or kilonewton per meter square. Surfacing means wheeling and so on. This is going to be for the carriageway, meaning the road. And then there's going to be 3 kilonewton per meter square or megapascals, kilopascals over the footways. Then you have here a barrier load of 1.3 kilonewton per meter. We will call this the crash load, meaning that a car can hit the side barrier, causing a loading on it, which is going to be 1.3 kilonewton per meter. And then finally, we have a differential temperature applied, and we have a differential shrinkage applied. And we have, of course, traffic loads. We're going to use a special vehicle, SV, 80 and this is taken from the combinations of the code here speaking of the code we're going to be using the euro code this is for my euro, euro code fans and with the uk annex now to finalize what are going to be the steps that we're going to be covering in this quick video series now notice i did not forget just a small re reassurance to you i did not forget my main bridge in the series but i thought i started postulating how can i make this become easy for you so I thought, hey, we need to start small first, and then we can go to the crazier bridges. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically uh, open a project, of course, in, in the software. Then we need to define our materials, followed by defining the beams, then defining the grillage. I will explain those later. Then having a line model for the beam. And we're going to make an analysis for construction because we have stages loads and so on then we are going to do a two span analysis and basically define more complicated loads especially traffic and then check out of course and carry out the design checks so this is the game plan that we are going to follow in this quick video series so yeah that was a quick introduction to what i'm intending to do this is going to be a very quick video series in quick succession so i hope you enjoy it and with that being said i think this is everything i wanted to talk about today i hope you enjoyed and before i finish i want to give a pre-stressed pre-cast beam sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen i want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you have enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video, then please comment, share, like, subscribe and so on. Especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.